This is perfusion and cardiac defects part three, and we're up to mixed defects. Uh, so we have transposition of the great vessels, total anomalous pulmonary venous connection at Valley Children's. They call that uh, pulmonary venous return, or TAPVR. So if you see that at Children's, it's the same defect. Truncus arteriosus and hypoplastic left heart syndrome. I said all the really bad defects start with a T except for hypoplastic. So these are all the really bad defects. Um, hypoplastic is also really bad. It's the only one that doesn't start with a T though. So we are sending a lot of deoxygenated blood out to the body. This is not just a little hole where some squirts over, but this is um, enough to make significantly low saturations. So in transposition of the great arteries, it's exactly what it is. The aorta and the pulmonary artery are switched. So blood returning from the body to the right side of the heart goes to the aorta to the body, returns to the right side of the heart, goes to the aorta to the body. Blood returning from the lungs goes to the left side of the heart, then goes out the pulmonary arteries to the lungs, returns to the left side of the heart, out the pulmonary artery to the lungs, to the left side of the heart. Hopefully you see a big problem here. The only mixing of blood that happens in this is through the ductus arteriosus. Um, this baby grows just fine in utero, but as soon as it's got to oxygenate its own blood, um, it starts doing badly. We're going to put this baby on prostaglandin to keep that ductus arteriosus open until the child can get to surgery, and that's usually within two to three days of uh, birth. Um, overall, this is a, a fairly repairable defect, but it's a, a difficult surgery. Um, they have to cut and switch those arteries. Now, where they've cut them is going to make scar tissue. Scar tissue doesn't grow, so periodically over this child's life as he's growing, they're going to have to go in and stretch those rings of scar tissue to um, get them, you know, to a, a acceptable size. Um, it's also, when you're cutting and tugging and moving these arteries, the coronary vessels are getting pulled and yanked. You uh, right, and this is a neonate, a couple of days old at the most. Um, you swell that coronary artery very much. You just did an MI to the, the heart. So it's a very um, precarious surgery. If everything goes well through the surgery, um, they do quite well, but they do periodically need a heart catheter to stretch out those rings of scar tissue. Total anomaly pulmonary venous connection. You should have four veins that come um, to the left atria, two from the right lung, two from the left lung. Total anomalous means all four of them go to the wrong places. You can also have partial anomalous, which means some come to the left atria, some do not. Uh, this depends on where they go to of how severe it is. Um, and sometimes they go somewhere where there's not enough vessel. It, you know, comes out of the lung and just connects into the aorta or something. And so they've got to use, um, you know, something that's artificial in the body. Things artificial don't grow. They're at risk for making clots. So, uh, this is n not only a very difficult surgery to repair. Often it's, um, not a fully normal heart when it's done and may very well have future surgeries. Truncus arteriosus. This is a single artery leaving the ventricles. Uh, as you can see, blood um, just mixes together the two ventricles. We've got a big old VSD, which we've got to have because we only have a single artery and then it splits to the aorta and the, the two pulmonary arteries. Um, so they've got to go in, separate those arteries, um, make another, make an extra artery in there. There's probably only parts of the valve, um, cause what's now one valve has to turn into two. So again, this is a really big surgery. Uh, you do end up with a relatively normal heart, but big surgery. Hypoplastic left-sided heart syndrome. Um, 
Hypoplastic means it really never developed. So you've got a big ASD. So blood coming back to the left atria, instead of going down in the left ventricle, crosses that big ASD back to the right side of the heart and mixes with all the blood returning from the body, comes up, goes out to the lungs, crosses the PDA because it's not coming through from the ventricle, right? So what's going to the body comes across that, that PDA um, and then to the body. We will never get a normal heart out of this. You cannot make a left ventricle where there isn't one. That it never, it didn't develop in utero. It's not adequate. Um, the best you can do is a three chambered heart. It's three staged surgeries. Um, and what you end up with, uh, is a three chambered heart. So here's just, I am not on my exams going to ask anything about shunts, but you will be reading them at the hospital. So here's a picture just so you know what you're seeing, right? This is the pulmonary artery, then splitting off to our right lung and our left lung. Here's the aorta coming up and the arch and then going down to the abdomen, um, carotids, subclavians. So the Blaylock Taussig shut or the modified Blaylock makes a connection between the pulmonary and the venous circulation, between the pulmonary artery and the subclavian. And it can do it here on the patient's right side or over here on the left side. This is, um, depending on which side is high pressure, depending on what the uh, defect is, this could actually let blood flow either way because it's always going to go from high pressure to low pressure. So this is a temporary relief for whichever side has really high pressures going on to get rid of some of that, that extra pressure. This is a temporary thing, palliative. It is not... Um, yeah, it's never a final treatment. Again, I'm not going to ask you about shunts, but this is so you can see them. Again, just orient you. Here's the aorta. Here is the pulmonary artery splitting left and right. And here's um, the vena cava coming into what would be down here is our, our right atria. So the bidirectional glen, glen shunt uh, takes your jugular and dumps it straight into the pulmonary artery and actually in that case they cut off the pulmonary artery from the heart and this is where the blood returns to it. Um, we've got the Blaylock over here. A couple other places where shunts can be done if you see those names you can look back on this. This is what is done for um, our tricuspid atresia a hypoplastic left heart uh, ends up very similar. It's a three-chamber heart when it's all done. We're using um, the, this is the final, we're using the right atria to pump to our lungs and then we're using the left atria and the right ventricle well, I guess in, in the tricuspid atresia, we have a left ventricle um, to pump to the aorta. But either way, we, we're using our functioning ventricle um, as the body pump. We're using just one atria as the pump to the lungs. Okay, hypercyanotic spells. These are sometimes referred to as TET spells because the kids with tetralogy of flow do this a lot. It is a sudden right to left shunting, right? And if you're shunt right to left, you've bypassed the lungs, which means acutely cyanotic. The treatment for this, we're going to put the child in a knee chest position that pinches off uh, these vessels. It raises our, our um, resistance, the peripheral vascular resistance, hopefully changing those pressures so it quits doing that shunting. Um, our goal is to calm this baby down, so you've got to use a calm, quiet approach. Pick them up, comfort them, put them in that knee chest. Uh, we can give them some oxygen. If it doesn't resolve quickly, we can do some morphine. Um, we might have to do volume expansion with IVs or propranolol. 
but usually that knee chest position is our first and best thing and comfort them down, com calm them down. Heart failure. Uh, our goal with heart failure is to promote oxygenation, support cardiac function, provide adequate nutrition, and provide rest. So this is um, a diagram that kind of, unfortunately, it's not very clear. It's better in the book, um, but shows symptoms down here that we're going to see from different causes of heart failure. Now, let me give you my analogy of heart failure. I say heart failure is, is like the McDonald's drive through A car comes in, gets processed at the drive through window, goes out until lunch. Lunch hits and you've got 10 cars that come in for every one that can be processed and sent out. So you've got a mass of cars trying to pack in to the parking lot there, into that line. That's heart failure. More is coming in than can be sent out. Um, just like with the McDonald's drive through half of us say, forget this line, I'm going to pull out into the parking lot. And um, at least with my clinical students, you'll I'll be asking you that. Where's the parking lot for this kid? Uh, the difference between that is the parking lot think it's only for compact cars. The compacts in your blood, that's water and electrolytes, right? So this is edema. This is why if the parking lot is the lungs, we're going to get respiratory symptoms. We're going to get fluid in the lungs, right? And the, the lungs are the parking lot from the left side of the heart. From the right side of the heart, the parking lot's the body. So you're going to get edema. You're used to dependent edema in adults. Kids, it's wherever it's the uh, tissue is stretchiest. Their eyes um, swell up very easily. Um, their fingers and their toes more than their ankles. And the other parking lot that actually lets whole blood in there, it's not just fluid and electrolytes, is the liver. So on these cardiac kids, they'll feel for the liver. The liver should be up under your ribs where you cannot feel it, or just if you're really reaching hard underneath the ribs, you feel like you're bumping into it. In a cardiac kid, it's very likely to be distended where it, it's below the right costal margin, and that's how we chart it, is how many centimeters below the right costal margin it is. Okay, so we're going to move on now from um, congenital heart disease to acquired problems. Uh, with congenital heart disease, they're born with this, right? This is a structural anomaly that happened in utero. They're born with it at birth. At birth. This is what most of our heart defects are. Acquired something happened after birth, an infection um, or something. And so it can be a big range of causes here uh, or it can be long-term complications from um, something that happened with their heart defect. So the first one, endocarditis. Um, this is infective, right? So this was caused by some sort of infection that got into the endocardium, the lining of the heart. Diagnosis, blood cultures. It's in the bloodstream. It's some sort of germ. CBCs, uh, we're looking for anemia and high white cells. Your analysis, there may be broken um, blood cells in there. Electrocardiogram, this makes an enlarged heart. Oftentimes, you get these areas of vegetation, so little hard things stuck on, the, on and around the valve. So that's what they're looking for on that um, echocardiogram. The treatment is IV, if it's a, a bacteria, IV antibiotics, if it's fungal, IV antifungals for weeks. It usually takes weeks um, and these kids are at risk and so anytime they're doing like um, invasive dental treatments they need to be on prophylactic antibiotics. This heart, um, the damage doesn't go away. So this is a damaged heart that will always stay a damaged heart.